I have just received from BU Toys what is supposed to be the upgraded new version of the X2 with some improvements. It's called the X5 Gel Blaster. So let's check out what's in the box. All right, so this one, there's some instructions that are actually in English. They're not just in Chinese like the other instructions were. I noticed that the instructions that came with the X2 Blaster say X1 actually, and they're all in Chinese. So should be easy for you to figure out what's going on here. And some stuff on the back about charging instructions and such, soaking the gel balls. All right, a lot of stuff in this box. I'm gonna take everything out, lay it on the table. Here is everything that comes in the X5 Gel Blaster box. This uses exactly the same magazines as the X2. This is that drum magazine, the infamous drum magazine that everyone loves, although the port is still tiny on here. They haven't made any improvements to that. It's still hard to get your gel balls in there by hand or using a funnel, it's tricky. So there's not a lot of space down in there to get those gel balls in. It would be nice if they made a bigger door there or something better to load. These magazines have a little bit larger door there, so a little bit easier to load. If you have a funnel, you can stick the funnel down in there and load it with the funnel. Same thing with a smaller magazine. It also still comes with this fake sight that goes on top. And I think you put the sight in this way. There's a pin that goes in here to hold the sight on and you can press that pin in all the way, and the sight is locked on. But this sight does nothing. It is not a reflex sight or anything. It's just hollow. It's purely cosmetic, so I don't think I'd even use that. This blaster feels a good bit heavier than the X2, and in the hand it feels larger. It now has an outer barrel here that's aluminum. You can screw this off. And it has an aluminum piece here too, an aluminum rod there, but the inner barrel is still plastic and still kind of flimsy. So if we look in here, that plastic barrel still floats around inside the aluminum barrel, so wrapping a little bit, a little bit of electrical tape around there would probably help keep it centered better and not moving around so much and vibrating as you're shooting gel balls. This latch here doesn't do a great job of holding the slide back. It, see, it can, can get overridden very easily. Honestly, on the X2, there was a better latch for holding the slide back. See, right now I can't even get it on there there when it's on there. It's not very secure. It can pop off really easily. The X2, you can keep the slide back and fire with it back. I think this one, when you start firing, it's probably gonna pop off. All right, let's put the battery in here. So this battery compartment looks like an improvement over the X2. It now has a different connector for the motor. Oh, and it uses this other connector for the light, I see. So you can connect the light independently of the motor. And is there more space in here? Or is it still tricky to get this in there? I think they still made this compartment too small. They need to make these compartments a little bit bigger. I don't know what they expect you to finagle these things into here. It looks like this needs to go down in here first. Like on the side. Ugh, I hate these things where it's like you're fighting to get the battery in. Not a good design. So I thought they'd improve this by having a battery door that doesn't have a screw, but they didn't leave enough space for the connectors in here. So the flashlight connector is fine. This one, shove it down in this space over here, but it doesn't reach that. So shove it in this space here. Okay, once you know, maybe it's a little bit easier, but it's a real hassle to get it in there. Plus it's still not gonna work. Oh, barely. Oh my gosh. It's like, it's all scrunched in there really hard. They got to leave a little bit more space in this. That barely worked. So now this switch on the side, it turns the flashlight on and off. So this is a better switch. It's not going to get hit as easily as the last one. There is this button here. I think you can push this button in with a tool maybe. Push this button in and the whole thing slides off. But unlike the other one, it doesn't use contacts it looks like the wires are still going into the blaster. I don't want to slide it all the way off and rip off. I think you need to have the battery disconnected if you want to slide it all the way off because there are wires now instead of just contacts. The safety for the gun itself, and this is the magazine release, so safety on, safety off. So again, the slide slides back, and like I said, if you lock it out, it quickly gets unlocked. It doesn't stay locked. Like, you can hold it, but 
and it really feels like it's forcing the motor like you can hear the difference between pull back and then So probably one of the first things I'm going to do when I tear this down is to disable the slide there. I don't want it sliding back all the time like that. That's just going to wreck the gears more even though it's kind of cool. And then with the magazine, drum mag. It's pretty quick. Whoops, this just slides off. It's a piece of glass that looks like it's been hand ground. And the LED and the reflector. It doesn't even screw on, it just all slid off. I'm going to be growing these gel balls, and after that, we'll be testing out the blaster, test out the FPS, and how fast it shoots, the rate of fire, and also the accuracy. I'm also going to be tearing down the blaster in some other videos, and showing what's inside, how to fix it, and also do another video of replacing the gears inside with these metal gears, such that we can have some gears that last longer, because I think the X5 is supposed to be improved over the X2, but the gears may still strip, and when they do, then the metal gears will provide some good quality gears to replace them with. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned if you want to see those future videos. I just want to say first of all that I'm not a fan of simulation gun, gel blasters, mill sim, stuff like that. I like the stuff that looks sci-fi, cool, interesting, and is not going to be easily confused with a real gun. So this one looks a lot more like a real gun it could by the silhouette, although it does have these orange, bright orange parts on here. So if you don't paint it, it's gonna look a little bit more like a toy gun. But if you were to paint this black, then it would look like a real gun.